Sound advice to keep your body and mind in perfect harmony. You're tuned in to the Dr. Stephen Show. Now, here is Dr. Steven Eisenberg. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Stephen Show. I am thrilled today. Why? Why am I thrilled? The crowd is telling me to be thrilled. What? The wisdom of the crowd is everything nowadays. And guess what? It makes a huge impact in healthcare. And I just happen to be blessed today to have Jared hey- Hyman, Jared Hyman from CrowdMed. He's a CEO and co founder of this amazing, amazing company and website that you can find on CrowdMed.com. Now, what do you do with CrowdMed? You can get medical detectives to help you solve an unknown diagnosis. We're going to learn all about this. Jared's amazing, and I'm so happy he's here today. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is The Dr. Stephen Show. Need to learn because financial planning can be complicated. There's wealthed.com, wealthed.com, the site dedicated to educating you about financial planning with guidance from experienced financial planners, helping you learn more about creating your financial plan. Watch Bucket Strategy Investing presented by Lucia Capital Group every day at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, or watch archived features from the show on demand. Learn more about options for your benefits on the Social Security Show every Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Lucia Capital Group brings you Bucket Strategy Live Wednesday evenings at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And learn more about the challenges women deal with on Femme Finance Thursday afternoons at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's the site where understanding financial planning can start to click. Click on WealthEd.com. Live programs, on-demand archive features and articles. Go to WealthEd.com. WealthEd.com. I'm back. It's the Dr. Steven Show, and we have Jared Hyman from CrowdMed. Hey, thank you for being here. <laughs> My pleasure. Got the, we got the hand in the shot. <laughs> Boom. Uh, I, wanted to, I, I just wanted to say, first of all, how awesome CrowdMed is. Thank you. I've been on the site. My patients are using it. They're thrilled with it. It's so cool. Tell me a little bit about how you went from um, doing research on the wisdom of the crowd to the transition into healthcare and making crowd med a reality. Sure, <laughs> happy, <laughs> happy to tell you the story. Tell me. So, uh, first of all, I'm a career entrepreneur. This is my third company, and my previous two nice. companies were in the market research space. Yeah. So, in market research, you gain an appreciation for how how wise crowds can be. Uh, we would use surveys and prediction markets and different research tools to harness crowd wisdom, but to answer questions of interest, research questions of interest to our clients. Yeah. But uh, after uh, exiting my previous company, I took off two years, I traveled the world, and oh. I had time to really think about what I want to do next. Where's one of your favorite places? Brazil. Nice. <laughs> All right. Went to 25 countries in that trip, but Brazil was, I think, the highlight. Cool. All right. So you're, you're, you're in Brazil. I'm and in Brazil. I'm something. on the beach. And I'm thinking about uh, you know, what really excites me, and the wisdom of crowds excites me, this concept that, that large groups of people can be much wiser than individual experts. And healthcare excites me, and um, I've got a personal story that inspired me to want to apply crowd wisdom to solving tough medical cases. Yeah, we're yeah. getting into that story. Sure. We're definitely going to get into that story. So you're in Brazil, you're thinking about what inspires me, what moves me, what do I want to put my attention to, and, and this hits you. It hits me that this is kind of my calling. This is what I want to do next with my life and my career. Nice. So I moved to Silicon Valley. I went through the Y Combinator. Well, how do you do that? You just say, I'm moving to Silicon Valley? Well, the good thing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I mean, a lot of people probably want to do that Well, now, who are watching right now or listening. It's a great place to live. <laughs> but it's not so easy to just make a, 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 an awesome, amazing company. It takes a lot of... Uh, work from going from idea to execution is the you know the cliche, but it's true. That's the hard part. You know, we have a saying in Silicon Valley that uh, you know ideas are cheap, but execution is is what, what ma- is, is what really makes a company. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure other people before me have had the idea of harnessing crowd wisdom to solve medical cases, but oh. I was particularly passionate about it. Uh-huh. And I had experience as as an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I I knew the steps in creating a company. 
I uh, moved out to San Francisco, uh, went through the Y Combinator incubator program, which yeah, helped get us so along. I mean, that's, that's way up there it, it in was terms a, of incubators. It was a great experience, yeah. and, and the partners are incredibly uh, uh, well-connected and helpful, and mm -hmm. uh, that was really what gave birth to, to CrowdMed some three years ago. Wow. Wow. So, um, and it was very personal, this journey. Um, can you just clue us in and, to, and tell us a little about the story? I know, I know it's very personal, but if you're willing, we would love to hear it here. Sure. So my little sister, Carly, uh, spent three years with a... Hi, Carly. <laughs> Hi, Carly. <laughs> she spent three years with a really terrible, uh, undiagnosed medical condition. Oh. And uh, she really lost three years of her life as she was suffering through mm -hmm. this condition. She couldn't mm -hmm. go to school. She couldn't work. Mm -hmm. She gained 50 pounds worth of weight. She, she wow. was sleeping 14 hours a night really awful symptoms. No one knew what was going on. No one could figure it out. She saw almost two dozen doctors. Two dozen? Almost two dozen. Racked she up six-figure medical bills, and no one could crack her case. And it turns out she had a, had a rare disease that uh -huh. affects just one in 15,000 females. Jeez. So her physicians had never heard of this before, certainly never seen it. Right. And uh, I just saw how, how ill-equipped our system is when it comes to helping people that don't have straightforward diagnoses, that have either complex or difficult to diagnose conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, she eventually was diagnosed through the medical system. But uh, I felt there must be a better way. Yeah. And uh, CrowdMed harnesses crowd wisdom to help patients like hers and even those with less, well, less complicated cases. Yeah, so 20, 24 doctors almost, six-figure medical bills. Now, if, if CrowdMed had been around, that could have been a lot, uh, a lot different story, huh? I was wondering that myself. Yeah. So uh, in the early days of CrowdMed, we created an initial prototype of the technology. Yeah. And we wanted to test it with a real-world case. And I thought, what better case to use than my sister's? So we actually retroactively solved her case on CrowdMed. Wow. But instead of three years, it took us just three weeks. And instead of six-figure medical bills, it, the cost was a few hundred dollars. Three years to three weeks with the wisdom of the crowd and the medical detective. Yes, exactly. We had our, uh, a, a small medical detective community that's grown a lot more since then. And uh, they're the key to make CrowdMed work, that and our technology. Yeah, so um, let's see. I mean, let's just jump into it. Okay. That's, I mean, the story is so moving. I'm, I, I got goosies. I mean, I, ho and I hope Carly's well. Fortunately, now she's great. Uh, she has a beautiful uh, two-year-old niece, um, and, or my niece to me, daughter to her. Yeah. And uh, she's doing great, living in Denver, happily married, and living a great life. But uh, it, it, she just, it's, it's a shame she had to suffer so long to yeah. get there. Yeah. And, and just shout out to Carly. Carly, I mean, I'm so glad you're well, and thank you for being part of this amazing journey, because if, if it wasn't for you, you may not have taken this leap and been so inspired to change the world. I think that's true. It, it was definitely Carly's case that inspired all this. Yeah, so shout out to, to Carly. Um, now, okay, so how do people find out about CrowdMed? How do they, how do they get their case up there? How, where, how do you become a medical detective? Sure. Uh, people find us through lots of different channels, uh, uh, so, social media, uh, uh, word of mouth, uh, search engines, if you go to Google right now and type in solve medical case, we're the first result. Type in difficult medical case, we're the first result. Uh, so That's cool. <laughs> so we get lots of visitors through search traffic and uh, media appearances like this, which is fantastic. Yes. Uh, once someone goes to our site, they, uh, if you're a patient, you can submit a case. Uh, you click where it says submit a case and go through the process we've established. Uh, and uh, basically you answer some questions on our patient questionnaire. Uh, you can upload uh, diagnostic test results, imaging test results, any types of clues that might help our community crack the case. Yeah. And uh, you select one of our subscription packages. And then once your case goes live, uh, it usually takes about two or three months for us to get enough uh, insights from our, our community yeah. to, to actually crack the case. Yeah, well, better than three years. Much better. With, with, with not a lot of, of, of action happening. And our average patient has actually been sick for eight years and seen eight doctors by the time they submit their case. And we're resolving them usually in two or three months. Now we had we had a few mystery cases on on the show, and we've seen good results. We've gotten great feedback. That's great. So I, we want to we want to continue with our mystery case series, and and so we're gonna we're definitely gonna continue with that. Now, Jared, why do you think the crowds are smarter than individual doctors? I mean, I'm an individual doctor, right? And um, 
And Lord knows I am every day on UpToDate.com. I am on NCCN.org. I am using the wisdom of the crowd to make my recommendations um, consensus, right? I mean, it's just you really can't do it as an individual doctor anymore. I mean, that's, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly <laughs> I'm sorry to <laughs> steal your thunder, but no, go ahead. Go no, ahead. You, you, uh, that's exactly it. It's, it's that there's so much medical knowledge out there today, and it, it's just impossible for, for one person, no matter how brilliant, to keep up oh, with. Oh, well, thank you. Is that what you're, <laughs> of is course. That what you're insinuating? Uh, obviously. <laughs> but it's, it's just impossible for one person to keep up with all this knowledge out there. Mm -hmm. and, but crowds don't have that limitation. A, a crowd collectively is, is essentially infinitely wise. Mm. So we're tapping into that, that unlimited intelligence where a patient on our site will can, you know, can tap into our community of thousands of medical experts around the world. And usually a dozen or two of them may participate in their case. And that's so much better than just seeing one doctor at a time and being limited by his or her uh, own knowledge, no matter how, how brilliant they are. Yeah, and, and you don't have to be a doctor to be a medical detective. Yes, and that's a very good point. Uh, we don't limit it to physicians. Uh, we made that decision early on, and I think it was the right decision to make because uh, doctors are certainly well-educated and, and, and go through four years of med school and yeah. residency and fellowship. Yeah. I don't have to tell you. Um, so doctors have a lot of medical knowledge, but they don't have a monopoly on medical knowledge. And That's true. <laughs> and the insight that, that leads a patient to a cure really could come from anywhere. Why do we think we have a monopoly? Well, we, well maybe, that's, maybe we don't. Uh, we, we definitely don't. Let me just rephrase that. But why did we think we used to? I mean, with the with the with the digital age, that went away, right? We all we used to have is our huge atlas of medicine and Harrison's internal medicine, and you know those days are gone. I think that's a big part of it. Is doctors used to have more or less a monopoly on medical knowledge, but now with the internet and uh, you know anyone can do a Google search and and, and get medical information at, at virtually no cost. Yes. So that that monopoly is gone, but this paternalistic paradigm, I think, is has has it still persists. What kind of evidence do we have that CrowdMed is working for people? Because well, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I, I've been on the site, I have submitted stuff, and I love it. But what kind of evidence do we have? Because you're going to have those naysayers out there, right? You're not a doctor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's true. And you know, we know it's one thing for people to be philosophically aligned with us, but we knew to convince the medical establishment that, that crowdsourced medicine can work, we need hard evidence. Yeah. So <laughs> p values. <laughs> <laughs> we have p values. <laughs> so from the very start, we started collecting a lot of feedback from our patients. Uh, more recently, we've actually started analyzing our patients' medical claims data and mining that oh, for, cool. for, for um, uh, metrics on our effectiveness. And after resolving now over 1,300 real-world cases on the site, we have quite a bit of evidence that CrowdMed works. Cool. Uh, for example, we know that uh, more than 60% of our patients are let closer to a correct diagnosis or cure from CrowdMed. We know that more than half of our patients tell us that their CrowdMed diagnosis was eventually medically confirmed to be correct by their doctor. Nice. We know that we lead to an average of 28% cost reduction for our patients going forward. That's huge. Uh, we know that we lead to a 40% reduction in their provider visit frequency going forward. Less visits. Less visits, a lot less visits, almost, uh, almost, almost a half, half reduction. Oh my God, it's amazing. It is amazing. Now. Do, do the do the medical t detectives get vetted in any way? Can anyone just go on and like, uh, you know, how do you sort of protect CrowdMed from, I guess, abuse or sure? Is that the right kind of phrasing? Well, we, we had to be careful. We wanted to yeah. cast the net wide enough to where we get diverse insights because uh, that answer that leads a patient to a cure really can come from anywhere. Yeah. But at the same time, we want to control quality, mm -hmm. so we did a lot of things to kind of balance those two opposing forces and. And uh, what it boils down to is what we've called it our detective rating system, or, or DR system, where cool. basically every user on our site, every medical detective has a score between one and 10, and, and your formal credentials only get you so far. So if you are a doctor, you start off higher than a med student who starts off higher than an uncredentialed person. Okay. But at the same time, uh, anyone can, can register and start Participating, participating in a limited way. Yeah. But just the moderator has to approve them, and there's certain quality control mechanisms before so someone really moderators. gets moderators. Yes. So okay. every case uh, is overseen by a licensed physician, who moderates the case, and is ultimately responsible for making sure that no no bad answers make it to the patient. And that's what that's that moderator is an important thing that lets us cast the net wide, mm -hmm. and, and still get insights from other patients, from alternative medical providers, 
because that moderator is always there to protect the quality of, of what makes it to the patient. Yeah. So, okay, you're on the show. You're, you're, you're speaking at Exponential Medicine. You're out there in the world. How else would patients find you? I mean, are, are, are doctors saying, hey, well, uh, I don't know, go to CrowdMed. I mean, is there, <laughs> is there <laughs> you know, uh, what other channels can we do? I mean, we're going to blast this. We're blasting this out to the world right now. That's yeah, great. And if you, you, if you guys have any issues that are, you, you're going to 12 to 20 doctors, and we do hear about this as doctors. Oh, man. As an oncologist, oh, I went to 12 doctors before anyone knew I had cancer. We do hear that. Yeah, we hear these stories all the time. Yeah. And, and we, we'd love to get more physician referrals. And we're, we're getting a lot of uh, papers published right now in the peer-reviewed medical literature. And I think that will raise our awareness amongst physicians and build our credibility with physicians as well by having you know, published papers about yes. us. Yes. Now, before we take a break, I want to end on one thing. Before we take our break, um, let's debunk something right now. Sure. Because there's no one else better than you to debunk this myth. The whole thing that, we, that you talked about, about patients Googling, and, oh, man, it sucks for the doctor because they come in and they bring stacks of stuff that they printed out. And I think that's, I think that's a bunch of malarkey because patients should be empowered, should have their own data, should ha have, they, they obviously have the right to go out and search. And, you know, what's CrowdsMed's uh, 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 take on this whole thing where doctors are saying, oh, don't go on the Internet, uh, let, leave that up to me. And right. I like to sit down next to a patient and Google together. That's great. I'll even sit, tell them to go to CrowdMed in between our visits and see what they come up with. You're great. And you're a progressive physician. And I, I wish all physicians were like that. Uh, unfortunately, there is this paternalistic culture, I think, uh, amongst in the medical system where a lot of doctors do feel, you know, I have all the answers. And um, our friend, Dr. Eric Topol, has talked about this on many occasions. Yeah. How, how the, the doctor is seen as... Shout out. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Um, the doctor is seen as, as uh, the high priest who goes to the mountain and comes down with their, 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 their uh, uh, advice from, you know, straight from, from the, the, the higher beings. <laughs> and we believe that, you know, like you, in patient empowerment. And yeah. the crowd made it just one of many ways that patients can be empowered to, to find answers on their own. Yeah. And, it's a uh, good way. We think it, it, it is better than online self-diagnosis because there's so much noise out there just on the Internet. Yeah. Whereas on our site, patients get the consensus opinion of lots of people who know what they're talking it's about. It's a great way to get that signal through the noise. Exactly. That's what it's all about. When we come back, we're going to talk about the signal through the noise with Jared Hyman from the CrowdMed. We love him. Come back. We'll see you after the short break. It's the site where understanding investing starts to click. Click on WealthEd.com. Educating you about financial planning and answering your most important questions with live interactive shows hosted by experienced financial strategists and an on-demand library of videos and articles you can access anytime for free. WealthEd.com brings you retirement planning guidance, social security strategies, tax management techniques, portfolio allocation options, and more. Your source for information and financial education. Online, on demand, on WealthEd.com. And we're back. Thank you for coming back to the Dr. Stevens Show. We are here with Jared Hyman from CrowdMed, the world's number one crowdsourcing site for health and wellness and medical diagnoses that end up, you know, costing the medical system billions of dollars. It's, it's really in the billions of dollars now. And you're making a dent in that. We are. Um, in the our, real world. We are. Uh, our best estimate, by the way, is that uh, our, our target patients with unresolved medical conditions in the U.S. healthcare system alone cost $360 billion a year. <laughs> and we've seen through actual wow. medical claims analysis, we reduced their going forward cost by 28% on average. So you can do the math on the impact we could have at scale. We have to, um, before, before um, President Obama like checks out of the White House, we've got to get him... Uh, on CrowdMed. <laughs> if he's listening, uh, Mr. Obama, I'd love to have you <laughs> check out the site. Yeah, <laughs> he is listening. Um, okay, so let's get back to the signal through the noise because I really like, uh, a great book, by the way, but, but this, it's such a great analogy because, yes, there's stuff out there and there's a lot of crap out there. Um, and, and, 
as a Sherpa, you know, I guess I consider myself a Sherpa. When I sit down next to a patient and I'm Googling with them, which I think doctors should do. Uh, Ryan, if you're listening from Google, yeah, co-Googling medical stuff. But what you guys are doing is you are, hel you, you, are, you are giving that signal through the noise in, in a beautiful consensus way. Because not every doctor and patient are going to sit and co-Google. Right. And it's really, it's not just about co-Googling. Sorry, Rye. It's deeper than that. Yeah. You are really, you are vetting people. You are, are, are you're all over the world. Exactly. So it's anyone all over the world. It's not just U.S. Yeah, we have users in over 100 different countries worldwide. 100 different countries. Mm -hmm. U.S. is probably number one. It is. Who's next? Uh, Canada, uh, but then a lot of uh, European countries, uh, South America, um, India, all, all over. But uh, you know, the signal versus noise thing is, yeah. is, is really the most important thing that we do, because there is a lot of noise out there. Of course. And a lot of, a lot of patients say, well, to avoid all the noise, I'm just going to listen to my doctor. But then you're only getting a very small amount of the possible signal. Yes. So what we do is we have all these mechanisms to, to separate signal and noise. The, the moderators that I mentioned, uh, you mentioned the consensus gathering tools like a point allocation system, yes. our detective rating system. I don't want to go off on a nerdy tangent, but <laughs> we, do, we do a lot of things. That's okay. To, we like that here. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great thing about long format shows like this. Yes. But we do a lot Let's of... Get into it. Yeah, we do a lot of things to separate signal and noise, and that's why it works so well. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of media attention, and I think well-deserved I'm hoping that, uh, I know I'm just a tiny little piece of this, your media attention, but we're really getting into it. And, and why, do you think, why do you think this is resonating so well uh, around the world with people? How is it impacting their lives? That's, two, that's a two-parter. I know I'm, I'm getting a, I'm, I'm a, a two-parter. What's with all the media attention, and how is it impacting people at their core? Sure, I'll answer both of those questions. <laughs> <laughs> On the media side, yeah, we've had a ton of media attention. Uh, hundreds of mainstream. Congrats. Thank you. And this, this is a the great Dr. Stevens show. Hello. This, fantastic. <laughs> this, is, this, is, uh, this is the pinnacle. I love it. Um, but uh, we've had a lot. And if I think about why that is, I've thought about that myself because most of it's inbound, interest in us. And mm -hmm. I think that we're tapping into something that just resonates with, with Americans. You know, we're a country that, that, that crowdsources our president every four years. Ooh. And yeah, interesting There's way to look at it. There's a lot of stuff going on with that right now. Right. And I hope, hopefully, for you know, we've had a pretty good track record. Hopefully, we'll keep choosing the right person. Yeah. I hope so. But that is crowdsourcing. It is. It's crowdsourcing. <laughs> yeah, it's, democracy is crowdsourcing. Oh and man, so I never I, thought of it like so that. I think Americans get it intuitively. You know, we're we're a country that revolted against the monarchy. Yet medicine can look very much like a monarchy sometimes. Yes, this is what you have, and if you don't listen to me, be gone with you. Right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Long gone are those days. Power to the patient. Yes. Right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Isn't that what we're talking about? The patient will see you now. Yeah. Another shout out to our very first guest. I hope you're watching. We'd like you to come back, but the patient will see you now is a great, a great segue. Um, Power to the patient. How is how are they impacted at their core? Someone who goes through the whole process, gets the crowd involved, gets the moderator, gets, and then they get their diagnosis. What's been the feedback? Like, hey, crowd med, love you. Like, how I was, uh, my my core was shaken. You know, I I probably talk too much about the statistics, um, but uh, every single one. I'm of a heart based guy. You know that. You are, and yeah. and, and I'm, I'm a Pisces, so I'm I'm a heart based guy at my core too. Yeah. But you know, if, if every single one of the thousands of patients we helped are, are real human beings with real stories, mm -hmm. and every every week, almost every day now, we hear about these new success stories, someone telling us how they had been sick for years and they had been bouncing around within the medical system and suffering, bedridden sometimes, and they couldn't figure out what was going on, and then they go to CrowdMed, and lo and behold, two or three months later, they have that insight that leads them to their cure, mm -hmm. and we've had people tell us we've saved their life. Um, we change their life, mm. and we hear these stories almost daily now, and it's, it's incredibly rewarding. Here's a question. Can we crowdsource empathy? You know how, uh, let, me, let me backtrack a second. We had, we had some people from, uh, we had the Lee Rum Siegel from Click Health and his team on. We are talking about, can you teach empathy? And, and VR, virtual, virtual reality, is now is now getting into the world of, of empathy. And can you teach empathy by having the symptoms yourself? 
you know, virtually. Mm -hmm. And then getting into the world of someone who has Parkinson's or someone who has another debilitating illness. Can you crowdsource empathy? I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say yes. It's funny you ask that because when we started CrowdMed, I thought it was all about the answer. I thought it was all about giving that patient that diagnosis. But here's what we found. The number one comment we hear from patients when they talk about their CrowdMed experience, yeah. they comment on how it was so great to have people actually care and listen. Oh, my God. And they say on CrowdMed, our community really cared about helping them and, and was willing to, 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 to be in it with them for the long haul. Whereas too, so too, way too often in the medical system, you get 10 minutes with your doctor in and out. He or she writes a script, mm -hmm. kicks you out the door. And they don't have the time, unfortunately, to, to really provide that empathy that patients so desperately need. We don't. Uh, we, we clearly don't. Um, the mandates are see more patients in less time. Mm -hmm. And then you have your rebels. <laughs> I guess I'm a rebel. Daddy, I'm a rebel. No, it's like, you know, because y y you say, no, I'm, I'm drawing the line in the sand. I got to have some time with this human being sitting across from me. She's fantastic. I wish we had more like you. But, but still, it, it, it can't go on forever because, yeah, the constraints are, are keep coming in. But, but here's what I'm saying. I just love what you said. It is, it can, can, can the detectives reach out and give words of encouragement? Or is it just like, I think you have the, but can they be like, you can do this. We're going to, we're in this together. Like, is there mm -hmm. words of, of encouragement and, and that empathy is evident in the experience? Yes. And, and we, we've engineered it to be so. Um, in the That's brilliant. In the beginning, all our detectives could do was suggest things, but we realized that empathy piece was missing. So we created a, a kind of a chat or messaging feature where detectives, our medical detectives, can, can communicate back and forth with the patient, check up on them. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, you know, I really, I, I feel for what you're going through, and I hope this helps. They can mm. express those sorts of things, which are really uh, just as healing as the, the diagnostic and solution suggestions themselves. So you're not only crowdsourcing a medical diagnosis, which is huge and important, but I would say just as important, equal par, is your crowdsourcing empathy, compassion, and for lack of a better word, you're bringing the love and the joy back into medicine. I would say for those doctors who are doing it. But, but you're also, in a way, let me go out on a limb and say, you're sort of healing medicine in a way because there's this, uh, right? There's this doctor versus, pa you know, patients are firing doctors. They only spent two minutes with me. Doctors are firing patients. You don't like what I say, go somewhere else. You know, there's this, uh, I don't know how to describe it other than this um, yeah. at odds with one another. It's true. Not it's everyone loves their doctor. Not every doctor loves seeing patients. There's. I mean, of course, there is, there's very good stories out there where doctors and patients love each other and they're very much working together as a team, mm -hmm. which I, I, make, warms my heart. But is it, could CrowdMed be healing medicine in a way? I, I'd love to think of it that way. I mean, we're Have you had this thought? I mean, like, not like, oh, I'm healing medicine, I'm Jared. But like, I really would go out on a limb and say yes. I think that you know we're still in the relatively early stages, right? We've, mm -hmm. we've, 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 we've had over a thousand cases resolved, but not over a million. But I think yeah. as we reach scale, uh, we really could try to uh, hopefully impact the entire healthcare system yeah. and, and not you know, at, at, a, at a macro level. That's, that's, of course, any entrepreneur's goal is to have that kind of massive uh, systemic impact at yeah. some point. We have a lot of doctors who like to watch the show, uh, hashtag H healthcare social media, HCSM. Um, what's the doctor feedback like? Are they like, I love being on CrowdMed. It, it, it reminds me why I'm a doctor again. Like, you know, I don't have to do it all on my own. Like, what's been the doctor's take on it? Because that's part of the healing. Sure. The doctors are lost and don't like practicing anymore in many cases. Not mm -hmm. every case, but... One piece of feedback we hear a lot from, from our medical detectives who are physicians is they say that on, on CrowdMed, they can get back to what they got into medicine to do in the first place, which is solve interesting medical cases and help people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about liability, billings, um, <laughs> any of the, the headaches of clinical practice. We actually have a lot of retired physicians who participate on CrowdMed to kind of stay in the game, even though they're done with clinical uh, work, which has yeah. become very hard these days. Yeah, and it's, it's much different than the house 
Dr. House, MD, from the show where it's the one guy who's just the brilliant dude in the ivory tower. Um, it's really a team approach. And this is what I was talking to um, Dr. Topol about, is that it's um, a powerful partnership. I think that medicine needs to be, and in many cases is, but should be more focused on that powerful partnership, doctor, patient, crowd. Maybe it's a trifecta. We're creating ex exactly that. And, and the, the crowd part has been mostly absent, I think, until, until we created CrowdMed. Yeah, what was there before CrowdMed? Was there such a thing? I mean, was there even something close? The next best thing was medical forums. But oh, they're, yeah, but they're, yeah. They're very noisy. There's, there's a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about on medical forums. Yeah. And they don't have all the quality control mechanisms that we built in. Those are smart. Those are smart. <laughs> Thank you. Because you've got to have, the, you gotta have that signal through the noise, not to, not to bring it up too many times, but um, we do have patients coming in with stacks. I'm not complaining, but uh, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot, and, and one problem we have to deal with at CrowdMed is way too often a patient brings their CrowdMed results to their doctor, and the doctor says, oh, no, something else from the Internet. And we have to make mm. clear this is not the same as a, a ream of, of papers that a patient just came up with on their own. This is the consensus opinion of people that know what they're talking about. Yeah. And it's, it's well-filtered, um, well, uh, uh, very intelligent suggestions. Yeah. And uh, once the physician understands that, they're much more receptive. Yeah, and then when you have partnerships with, um, tell me about the partnership that um, CrowdMed has forged with um, Dr. Topol's institute. Sure. So Down here in San Diego. Yeah. I, I was here a few months ago visiting with Dr. Topol and his team, and uh, they've been fantastic. Um, uh, I, I met uh, Dr. Topol at a, at a dinner several months ago in San Francisco. Nice. And he immediately took to what we're doing and uh, invited me to come down here and meet with his team. and. Uh, they did some uh, some research on, on us, um, mm -hmm. and, and they crunched a lot of our statistics. And we're going to publish a paper, although it was uh, there was another paper already published that uh, created a conflict, unfortunately. But uh, they've been extremely helpful. Uh, Dr. Topol uh, introduced me to the president of WebMD, and that led to a partnership that uh, we'll be kicking off soon. I Ooh, can't I can't, can't go into details. Go into details, but um, but you heard it here first. <laughs> Uh, this is the first time I've talked about it, yes. So you You've heard it here first. Yes, we're working with WebMD, and, and that should be very exciting because they have obviously... I hope I didn't get you in trouble. No, I, I brought right. it up. Right. Um, they've got, a, a, obviously, the number one uh, destination for medical information mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the world, uh, yeah. both on the patient side and through Medscape on the uh, practitioner side. Yes. And uh, their CEO knows us, and, is, and we're working closely together, so we're excited to... Um, uh, you'll see more, of that, more about that in the coming weeks. That is huge. Um, Okay, we're going we're gonna to wrap up here in a minute. Um, I just want to end with um, how proud I am of, of you for, for doing this. It's a, it, you took a stand. You made it work. You did what it took. Now, you, now uh, have, you ever, have you ever gone on for anything that you've experienced? <laughs> I mean, no, that's a little personal. You don't have to answer. But have you ever used this site for yourself? Because, I, I mean, I, I've gone on and done a few things for me. Uh, something else I've never uh, talked about publicly before, but this is a great place to, to <laughs> announce. Heart based We love you here. Well, thank okay. you. I Go appreciate ahead. that. It's, it's an honor to be here. Uh, but, yes, I did actually uh, post my own case not long ago. And, interesting. Uh, none of, no one what, in our that, what was that like for you? It was an, a really interesting experience because I've been hearing this feedback from our patients for years now about how much value it provided to them. But it was something else to, to experience something firsthand and, and feel for yourself what it's like. And I felt like so many of our patients feel that it was great to be heard. It was great to have a lot of people take a sincere interest in solving my case. Uh, it was great to uh, get feedback from people from all different medical disciplines who all have different perspectives, different ways of seeing things. Mm. And my issue, fortunately, was not nearly as bad as my sister's. Yeah. Um, it's insomnia, if, if you, yeah. um, so nothing life-threatening, but something that affects my lifestyle. Sure. And uh, I got and some many people. Yeah, I think it's you know millions and billions. I know it's one of your uh, areas of special, of special interest. Yes, I'm very interested in in sleep and sleep medicine and how it affects so many aspects of our lives. And um, I, I, thanks for sharing that. And did you and you got some and you got some resolution there, huh? I did. I, I got several things to try, and uh, you know, some were nutrition based, some were related to meditation and exercise, and some were, were more about how to quiet my mind and different things. But I tried some of the suggestions that I got from our community, and, and they worked. 
Yeah, so and, a and what I what I've read is that a lot of Silicon Valley successful entrepreneurs struggle with this. It, it, I'm sure. It, 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 what we do is a, it's a taxing job. So I think yeah. sleep is one of those things that can definitely be affected. Yeah. So we have a very special guest coming up in a few weeks, um, who just wrote a book about sleep. Um, Ariana Huffington's coming on the show in a couple of weeks, and we're going to really get into sleep like you've never gotten into sleep before. So we're excited about that. But I want to thank you for being here. This has been an amazing uh, show. You have done it. It's, it's the signal through the noise with heart, with, with ingenuity, with, with intellect, with, with love. And everything we do here is based on a foundation of love. So I just want to high five you and say thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Crowdmed.com. I want you to go to crowdmed.com. Put your case on there and and, and get the medical detectives and get the wisdom of the crowd for you. Again, thank you to Jared Hyman. Thank you to CrowdMed. And you have been watching The Dr. Stevens Show. We'll see you soon. It's the site where understanding investing starts to click. Click on WealthEd.com, educating you about financial planning and answering your most important questions with live interactive shows hosted by experienced financial strategists and an on-demand library of videos and articles you can access anytime for free. WealthEd.com brings you retirement planning guidance, social security strategies, tax management techniques, portfolio allocation options, and more. Your source for information and financial education. Online, on demand, on WealthEd.com.